If you make just one of the nine ending mistakes I'm about to show you, it could ruin your entire fantasy novel. And I know that because after personally coaching over 80 fantasy writers and from publishing four novels myself, I've come to realize that your ending has the biggest emotional impact on your reader. You could write an amazing first 90% of your fantasy novel, but if you write a crappy climax, it's gonna destroy the reader's goodwill and cheapen the entire story. So today I'll be showing you exactly how to avoid these nine ending mistakes that I see new fantasy writers make all the time. And to explain the first mistake, I need to give you a quick scenario. Let's say the beginning of your fantasy novel features a dark wizard coming in to destroy your main character's village. She flees from the village and swears vengeance against this dark wizard. But if the climax of your story is about your main character competing in a medieval cooking festival, then readers are going to feel quite cheated. This fucking pigeon's that raw, it can still fly. Why is that? Well, you promised them a story of revenge and justice in the beginning of your novel, and you delivered something else entirely. In other words, you had a misalignment between the promise, progress, and payoff of your story, or as I call them, the three Ps of your story. When you think about it, that's all a narrative is. It's setting up a promise, an expectation in the opening of the work. It is showing your character make progress towards that thing. And then there is a payoff at the end where your character manages to get the thing they want or they don't get the thing they want or there's some third option where maybe they get some aspects of it but they lose out in other ways instead. And the big mistake here is that if the payoff in your ending does not match the promises you're setting up earlier on in your story, it's going to feel hollow. Readers will feel cheated and the end just won't feel satisfying to read. That's why to write a great ending in your fantasy novel, you need to set it up effectively in the opening of your story. In my first chapter mastery course, I talk about this idea of using your first chapter to write your story in miniature. In other words, asking yourself, what are the overall ideas and tone and direction of this story? And how do I compress that down to give readers a kind of short story version that's like a tasting platter of what they can expect from the rest of your book. For example, in the opening of Jade City by Fonda Lee, which is a fantasy crime story that follows a bitter gang war between two rival families in a world where Jade grants you magical superhuman abilities, we follow two young thieves as they attempt to steal Jade from this restaurant. It is a perfect encapsulation of how greed and the desire for status, the desire to make a name for yourself is so important in this world and how it leads to this kind of cyclical nature of violence that is very difficult for the characters to break out of. And that is essentially what the entire story is about. Now, if you are struggling to align the payoff at the end of your story with the promise at the beginning of your story, one of the biggest things to just be thinking about here is, am I giving readers the right expectation of the tone of this piece? So if the ending of your story is this super bloody, like gritty, violent battle, where there's tons of swearing, there's tons of people dying, it's just a really dark ending, then you wanna be giving readers a taste of that tone in the first chapter of your story. And this actually brings me to a second really bad ending mistake that I see new fantasy writers make all the time. And it is not planning backwards from the end. So with my first novel, The Aeon Academy, I just started writing that with no plan, no outline, anything like that. And I just went from the start and I went all the way to the end. And predictably, the ending was very messy. The main plot threads of the story weren't really resolved in a satisfying way. I only introduced the main antagonist like five chapters from the ending and it wasn't even a cool twist where you only discover their true identity at the end. It was literally just me not realizing that I had to set my antagonist up earlier. And there were just a ton of other plot threads that were left dangling and unresolved in the climax. So with my next book, Across the Broken Stars, the ending was actually one of the very first things that came to me. And then I worked my way backwards from there as I outlined the story. And I think it worked really well to set up a very emotionally resonant, satisfying climax to the story. And as a result, it's led to reader reviews like this. As finely crafted as any I have ever read, the ending is absolutely the best. In many ways, your ending is the whole point of the story. It clarifies everything that's come before it. It contextualizes everything that's come before it. And I usually find writing my endings to be one of the most fun parts of the process because I've set everything up so that it leads to this big climactic moment. The reason why working backwards from the end of your story and why I think it's so important to know how your story is going to end before you start writing it is because of something I call the contrast principle. So I want you to consider this question carefully. 
If you want readers to be cheering for your character being brave and heroic in the climax of your fantasy novel, what is going to be the most satisfying way to set that up? Will it be to show them as brave and heroic in the first couple of chapters of your book? Or would you be better off actually showing that character being very cowardly and struggling to be brave at the beginning of your novel? Obviously the second scenario, because there is more change and transformation there. And one of the biggest things that makes readers love a character and really fall in love with a fantasy novel is seeing that process of transformation and evolution and change as a character goes through the events of your narrative. And this is why I take so much joy in outlining and why it was a big game changer for me when I discovered this earlier on in my writing career. Like I tell the students in my fantasy outlining bootcamp, when you have a solid outline for your story, it means that from the moment I start writing my first draft, I know exactly where everything is leading. I know the exact purpose of all the scenes I am creating. And it means that when I finally arrive at my ending, it feels so much more resonant because everything was working together in this very interwoven and cohesive way to set up that beautiful, explosive climax. But even if you do know how your story is going to end, it's very important to avoid the next mistake, making the climax too easy. Your ending should be the moment of maximum struggle and maximum difficulty for your main character. This is your chance to really put your characters to the test and show who they are at their deepest core. The Harry Potter series is a great example of this because as the series progresses, Harry steadily loses all of his protectors. He loses Sirius Black, he loses Dumbledore, he loses countless other mentor figures until eventually it's just him versus Voldemort. There's no one else he can hide behind. You wanna think about your story as this ever tightening vice. And the moment of your climax is the moment when that vice is squeezing your character as hard as you possibly can. To give you a bad example to put this into a bit more context here, let's imagine that your main character is this warrior and you set up the idea that they are the second most powerful warrior in this country. Then maybe there's a scene halfway through your story where they fight the most powerful warrior and they narrowly manage to achieve victory and kill this other warrior out there. If the climax of your story then features a fight between your main character and the true antagonist of your story, but you've established that this antagonist isn't as good a fighter as that warrior he fought earlier on, readers aren't gonna feel that invested. There's not really that much tension or emotional stakes here because you already gave us a moment of higher conflict earlier on in the story. Now, of course, like with all of the mistakes that I always share in these mistake videos, there are ways to make these work and there are always exceptions to the rule. For example, maybe the final climax of this story isn't even a fight at all. Maybe it's about your warrior having to convince a court that the antagonist is guilty of some heinous crime. Or maybe it's about your warrior trying to persuade an enemy army to surrender and there's actually no physical fighting involved. It's just verbal fighting through dialogue. But the point being is that you want the climax of your story to be the moment of greatest challenge for your main character. Because it's only when someone faces their greatest challenge that you have the ability to have them rise to their highest self. And if you refer to the literal dictionary definition of a climax in a story, the Cambridge Dictionary defines it as the most important or exciting point in a story or situation. So make sure that that most exciting moment actually happens in the climax and isn't done earlier on in the story by mistake. And if you wanna avoid making the climax of your fantasy novel too easy for your main character, then it's especially important to avoid the next mistake, characters winning through luck. So you might've heard of the idea of a deus ex machina ending before. This is a Greek word for God from the machine. And it basically is a common convention that was used in Greek plays back in the day where the sort of conflict of the story would literally get resolved by a godlike character descending from above the stage and just sort of like waving his magic wand to fix up all the complications in the play. It's not a very satisfying way to resolve your story, is it? It feels cheap. It feels like you're cheating the reader out of a genuinely interesting way of resolving the conflict in a narrative. In almost every case, you want your characters to win through skill or grit, not through luck. And to get a little bit more specific here, the climactic confrontation of your fantasy novel, ideally it's something that your character can only solve thanks to the progression and the growth they have experienced throughout your novel. The person they were at the beginning of your story shouldn't be able to solve the climax at the end. They can only solve that climax because of the, the friends and the skills and the character traits and the progression that they went through over the course of the narrative. 
Of course, this is in a positive character arc. It's a little bit different in a negative character arc where your character is kind of going down this tragic uh, descent. But generally speaking, if you are writing a story where the intention is to show your character growing, then the best way to actually show that growth and not just tell us about that growth is to make sure that they are only able to solve the final confrontation because of the evolution and the transformation they've gone through over the events of your story. So I know it sounds kind of basic here, but you would be really surprised at the number of stories I've read or the number of outlines I've looked at from different clients where the main character isn't really the one who is solving the climax of your story. There's some secondary character who swoops in and cleans everything up for them instead. Generally speaking, that feels very unsatisfying. And whenever I see a client that has an ending like that, I almost always am prodding them to try to make their main character more active and more responsible for actually solving the events of the plot. And speaking of unsatisfying endings, one of the worst ending mistakes you can do, especially if you are writing a fantasy series, is this next mistake here. Not resolving the core conflict of your story. So very simple question for you here. Do you resolve the main conflict of your story by the end of your book? If you don't, and you kind of leave things dangling here on a big to be continued sign, that could potentially be a huge red flag. And I have seen this pattern come up again and again when I've helped different writers outline their stories or edit their novels, particularly when it's the first book in a series. So for example, let's say that your story builds up to a big confrontation between your protagonist and your antagonist. But then both your protagonist and your antagonist survive the final battle of your book and maybe they don't even fight each other in this battle. That right there is gonna make readers close the book and angrily stare at a wall and ask themselves, why did I even bother reading through the last 500 pages? Again, it comes back down to the idea of promise, progress, and payoff. What you just saw there in that example is a promise that was not paid off. And therefore, the reader walks away feeling incredibly frustrated and cheated. Now, of course, you might be wondering, Jed, how does this work if I'm writing the first book in a series? Obviously, I can't resolve everything. That's why I'm writing a series in the first place. Well, if this is the very first novel you have written, then I highly suggest that you treat it as a standalone book with sequel potential. A fantastic example of this is A New Hope, the very first Star Wars movie. The main question of this story is, can Luke and his friends blow up the Death Star? By the end of the movie, they have. And Star Wars could have just ended there as a perfectly adequate standalone film. But then you've got The Empire Strikes Back and The Return of the Jedi, which massively expands the scope of the story. And it goes from just, how do we defeat this one piece of the Empire? to how do we overthrow the entire empire as a whole. Now, I would say that if you are structuring a trilogy, which is a very common way to write a fantasy series, it is okay to leave more of a cliffhanger between books two and three. That is what I'm doing right now. I'm currently about 90,000 words into writing Sorrow of the Sun, which is the working title for the Kingdom of Dragon sequel and is intended to be book two in a trilogy. The ending of this book, which is one of the very first things I thought up when I was going through the outlining process, it is going to be quite the major cliffhanger. There's still gonna be a lot of the main plot threads from this book resolved by the ending, but it's gonna end in a really interesting way. I'll leave it at that for now. But the point is, for your very first book, you just wanna show readers that you can actually stick the landing. I mean, just ask yourself, if you can't give them a satisfying resolution in book one, why should they trust you to give a satisfying resolution in book 10? So to get a little bit more tactical here, there's two big ways that you can create a sense of resolution and completeness in the first book in a series while still leaving things open to the prospect of sequels. The first method is that your protagonist achieves their initial goal, but realizes things are more complicated than they initially expected. For example, maybe your main character in your climax of book one finally manages to kill the assassin that murdered his wife, but he discovers in that climax that this assassin is just the servant of a much larger, much more powerful mastermind. We still get a decent resolution of the main conflict there, but it obviously opens up the possibilities of where the story can go from this point on. The second main approach is that your protagonist achieves their initial goal, and now they have a totally different set of complications to deal with. There's a great example of this in The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Kaladin goes from being this sort of depressed loner slave at the start of that book to eventually rising as a bit of a military leader who plays a very pivotal role in the final battle that happens at the end of this novel. So that gives him this really satisfying arc in the first book. But now in book two, he has a totally different set of challenges to deal with because now he is a leader, he has the responsibility of the men under his command, he's having to deal with politics in a way he didn't have to in the first book, and it just means that the conflicts and the 
obstacles he faces in book two are totally different. Now, in a moment, we'll move on to the next big ending mistake. But first, like I mentioned earlier in this video, outlining, in my opinion, is the best way to construct a memorable and satisfying ending for your fantasy novel. Because with a strong outline and with a strong sense of where your story is going to end up before you actually start writing even the first chapter, it means that everything can work together cohesively to reach this incredibly emotionally satisfying climax. If you would like me to help you develop your own outline and write an unforgettable ending in your fantasy novel, then you should check out my seven week fantasy outlining bootcamp. Inside you'll join myself and a small community of dedicated friendly fantasy writers as we go through the process of building out your plot, figuring out your character arcs, and basically planning your novel to make sure that everything is building towards a resonant and satisfying conclusion. I've run three cohorts of this program already, and I absolutely love running this thing because I see such incredible results from the students I work with. The cohort was a transformative experience. Jed was a huge source of knowledge for each of us and a great teacher. I've been writing books for couple years now and what I've really been lacking is the structure and somebody to, to sort of guide some of these ideas into um, a process that's going, going to work for me. Through working with my, my fellow authors and having Jed lead that conversation, I now feel more empowered to set forward on my uh, journey to become an author with all these ideas I have and make them sound good and exciting and it's all because of this class. Applications for the next cohort close on October the 14th. You can apply by going to jedhern.com forward slash outline. And if you are watching this video after October the 14th, go to the same link and you can join the waitlist to be notified about future cohorts. Now the next common ending mistake that new fantasy writers make all the time is what I call the fizzle out ending. So there's been quite a few novels that I've edited or helped with the outline on where the climax of the story is not so much one climax, but it's like the four or five different plot threads of this book are all resolved at different times. And so you have one chapter where the first plot thread is resolved, then the next chapter, the second plot thread is resolved, the next chapter, the third one is resolved and so on. And it results in this climax that feels weirdly dissipated. It feels like the tension just slowly leaks out of the story because whenever you close off a plot thread in your book, it ceases to be a source of tension for the rest of your story. And it creates this feeling of your story just puttering out as we approach the final pages. You don't want that. The better approach, and this is something I've done with a lot of my clients, is to evaluate all these different plot threads, ask yourself where these are actually resolved in your story, and if possible, try to compress them into one singular not moment. Oftentimes you can take a average ending and turn it into an amazing one simply by taking all these different conclusions to your plot threads which resolved maybe over the span of 30 or 40 pages and by compressing them into a single moment in your narrative where everything is resolved in that one scene. It usually leads to a much more satisfying and dramatic climax because instead of having a little explosion here, another little one here, another little one here, another little one here, you are stockpiling all of your gunpowder into one massive eruption. And this actually leads into the next common ending mistake, which is not aligning your internal and external journeys. Most fantasy novels have two equally important journeys. The first one is the external journey of your plot. So this is, you know, the conflict that your character is going through. It's the external goal that they're chasing after. But then you also have a second journey over here, which is the internal journey or the internal progression that a character experiences. So for example, maybe the external plot of your story is my character has to win a sky sailing tournament in his special flying boat. But the internal journey of your story is my main character has to overcome his arrogance and selfishness to become a good team member so that he can help his team win this sky sailing tournament. And then you can kind of see where this is going, right? The external and internal journeys are gonna cross over in our climactic moment where it's the final competition in the sky sailing tournament. And the only reason why the main character's team manages to win is because he finally stops being selfish and he does something kind of sacrificial and selfless for the team and that coalesces into this climactic knot moment where both of these different threads are resolved at the same time. If you just think about the endings in fantasy novels that you love the most, they pretty much all do this, right? They do this thing where they are kind of aligning both the external and the internal journey of your character and your plot into this one glorious moment where everything just clicks into place. For example, in Toy Story, the external journey is Woody has this mission to save Buzz Lightyear and return him to Andy before the family moves away. But the internal journey that Woody faces is that he has to overcome his jealousy towards Buzz. Listen, Light Snack, you stay away from Andy. He's mine. And he has to realize 
that being Andy's favorite toy does not define his value. So in the final climactic scene of the story, both of these threads align with each other. Woody and Buzz are racing to catch up to the movie truck. Woody's internal growth, where he learns to see Buzz as a friend rather than as a rival, allows them to work together so that they can both return to Andy. Andy, Buzz, you're flying! This isn't flying, this is falling with style. In other words, Woody's internal journey of overcoming his insecurity aligns perfectly with their external success of getting back to Andy. And as a result, it wraps up both threads in an incredibly satisfying and emotionally resonant way. This brings me to the next common ending mistake, wrapping up your plot threads too easily. So I know earlier in this video, I talked about the importance of making sure you are resolving the main conflict or the main plot thread at the end of your fantasy novel, because if you don't do that, readers are probably gonna feel a little bit cheated and dissatisfied because there's just no payoff to all of the story they've been reading so far. However, I do recommend that even if you are writing a standalone fantasy novel, you do leave a couple of aspects of your story open-ended. When you do this effectively, it is so powerful to give readers this little hint as to where your characters are going to head in the future and then basically opening it up to the reader and allowing them to fill in the blanks and daydream and just imagine where the characters might be in five years time, 10 years time, 20 years time, or whatever period it is. When you do this effectively, it radically enlarges the scope of the story and it sort of transfers the narrative from being something that is operating within these rigid confines of what you're actually putting down on the page to actually freeing the reader to imagine all these possible directions that the story could go in. And it is just something that allows a novel to linger in the reader's imagination far longer after they close that final page. Now, of course, obviously this is not right for every single story. If you are killing off your main character, for example, it's difficult for the reader to imagine where they might go in the future because you've excluded that possibility. And if you are gonna write a story where you do kill off your main character at the end, then you should absolutely check out my video titled Six Ways to Write Sadder Character Deaths. But in most cases, it is nice to leave a few little open threads at the end of your story. Again, nothing major, but some of the little smaller subplots uh, can maybe still have some questions lingering around them. It also makes your story feel more realistic because if absolutely everything in your story is wrapped up in this neat little bow, sometimes that doesn't feel true to life because life is messy and not everything is always resolved in a really clean way. And this brings me to the next mistake, which is not using your closing image to full effect. The last few pages of your fantasy novel have such immense power. They have a disproportionate impact on how your reader feels as they walk away from your story. What's interesting here is that in most cases, by the time the reader arrives at the last couple of pages, the main conflict of your story is done. And that actually gives you a chance to let the tension settle down a bit and just hang out with the characters and enjoy being in this world you've created. I remember reading the Harry Potter series as a kid and some of my absolute favorite moments from those books were when the main conflict was over and we just got to hang out with Harry, Ron and Hermione at Hogwarts as the good summer weather began to come in and you could just relax and really enjoy this world. So personally, I like to think really hard about the closing image of my story. Again, it is something that I outline pretty early on in the process so that I know where I'm leaning towards so that I have that sense of real catharsis and emotional resonance when I arrive there. One of the biggest things in particular to be thinking about with your closing image is how does it circle back to reflect the transformation or the change that your main character has gone through over the course of your story? For example, the central wound of Harry Potter at the start of that series is that he is this alone orphan with no family to love him. And over the course of the series, we see him bond with friends. We see him kind of form this newfound family between you know, himself and Ron and Hermione and the Weasleys and all the other people that enter into the orbit of his life. And so the epilogue to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, which is set 19 years after the story finishes, shows Harry with his wife, Ron and Hermione, his best friends, and his kids about to send them off to Hogwarts. Harry has been able to go from not really having a family of his own to now being the leader of a new family and being able to give his kids the experience he was never able to have for himself. And for me, this epilogue just really hit in such an emotionally powerful way because in that moment, Harry had finally found the familial love and the peace that he had been seeking his entire life. Also, you wanna make sure that you are putting as much effort into your closing lines of your fantasy novel as you are into your opening couple of sentences. To me, one of my absolute favorite ending passages from a novel comes from The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which is 100 years old next year in 2025. 
I've probably read this book five or six times. The ending couple of lines or the ending few paragraphs really perfectly captures the tragic yet poetic nature of this story. Let me read it to you now. And as I sat there brooding on the old unknown world, I thought of Gatsby's wonder when he first picked out the green light at the end of Daisy's dock. He must have come a long way to this blue lawn and his dream must have seemed so close that he could hardly fail to grasp it. He did not know that it was already behind him, somewhere back in that vast obscurity beyond the city, where the dark fields of the Republic rolled on under the night. Gatsby believed in the green light, the orgiastic future that year by year recedes before us. It eluded us then, but that's no matter. Tomorrow we will run faster, stretch out our arms farther, and one fine morning. So we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. Now, like I said earlier in the video, if you want to make sure that the ending of your fantasy novel is working effectively, it is essential to set up the opening of your fantasy book correctly. So you should check out this video over here to avoid the six most common first page mistakes that I see new fantasy writers make all the time so that you can be writing an effective opening that immediately hooks your reader. Keep writing and keep striving.